Shall we play a game? Hey, thanks for checking out my tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to do this really cool text effect. It's uh, inspired by the Whopper computer from the movie War Games in the 80s. It's a CRT sort of effect. I could not find a tutorial to save my life for this effect, so I kind of put this together myself. Um, so here we go. Let's close out of this and then open a new file. I'm going to choose the default 7x5 and set it to horizontal orientation at 300 pixels per inch. Make sure it's RGB color and the background, I want it to be black. Hit create. Okay, so I'm going to unlock this layer so I can mess with it. And then double click on it to open up the blending options. Another way to do that would be to go down here to the effects button and choose blending options and then I'm going to choose inner glow blend mode is screen opacity is 25 noise is 0 and I'm going to click the gradient box so if I click inside the gradient box it'll open up the editor my first stop is set to black and my last stop is set to this blue color I double clicked on that stop to open up the picker and I have the color set to 022C80 and hit OK and OK and then I have the technique set to softer the source I have it set to the edge because I want the darker color on the outside if it's set to center the darker colors on the inside but I want it set to the outside so I'm going to select edge. The choke is turned all the way down and the size is turned all the way up and then hit OK. So I'm going to go over here and select my text tool and I'm using two different types of font. I'll explain why in a minute. The first font is data control which I downloaded from dafont.com. It was created by Vic Fager who's website I'm going to include in the description below. Um, he has some really cool fonts on his website and they're all free so I suggest you check them out. Um, I want the color to be white and the text size to be 22 points and then I'm going to look inside here and type in my phrase. Okay, so next I'm going to change the font to the second one that I want, which I got from Adobe Fonts. It was created by the Paratype Font Foundry, and this one I'm going to change the font size to 17 because I know it's going to be a bit big. The white is going to be the same color, and then I have my glyph button right here but if you don't you can go up to window glyphs and I want this font because I want this glyph right here this rectangle okay close it and it resized it so I'm gonna make it smaller and hit the check button okay so there we have it now right click on that layer and convert it to a smart object and then command or control A to select all. Choose the move tool and horizontally and vertically align everything. Then command or control D to deselect everything and control J to make a copy or command J on Windows. Um, I'm going to hide this copy for now and then select the original type layer. I'm going to double click it to open up the blending options or select the FX button to open it. And then uncheck the channel R which is red. I don't want that. And then I'm going to go to outer glow. and. 
it's going to be blend mode is screen, opacity 75, noise 0, and click on this box to open up the color picker. And the color I have is 0033CC. And then hit OK. And OK. Everything else is going to stay the same. And then from here, I'm going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then I'm going to set the blur to 5 and hit OK. And next, I'm going to unhide the copy layer that I made and click on it to activate it. And then I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to set it to 3 this time and hit OK. Next thing we're going to do is we have to make sure that these two boxes are the default colors, so hit D if they're not. The black will be in the front and white at the back. Then we're going to go to the adjustment layer button, which is half solid, half transparent circle. Click on that and choose solid color. We want the color to be white and hit OK. And then right click on it convert it to a smart object and then go up to filter filter gallery open up the sketch folder click on halftone pattern and I have mine set to the size is 1 contrast is 10 pattern type is line you can adjust these numbers to however you like and then click on the plus button to open another layer and open up the texture folder and click on grain. I have mine set to intensity 40, contrast 50, and grain type is stippled. And then hit OK. And then in this blend mode menu, you're going to click on it, choose multiply. And then for the opacity, set it to about 50%. And that's it. I chose to do mine. I'm just gonna collapse these to clean it up. I chose mine to, to be this way because I wanted to make sure that the text stays live. So if I double click on the smart object to open up the text layer, I can choose my text tool and highlight the text and change it. We'll say, hello. Click OK and then save it. And if we go back to our project, we change the text, but the text effects are still applied. And that's it. Thank you.